Welcome to the Mobile Attack Vehicle Ambulance Build. Today I'm going to, well I'm gonna attempt, I don't want to say I'm gonna attempt, I'm gonna install vinyl on the floor and this is something new for me I've never done before and I'm gonna try my best at it. First thing is why did I choose sheet vinyl? I looked at a lot of videos of other flooring that people had put into their vans and RVs. I'm not a fan of the wood floor because of the shrink and the swell and the gaps. I'm not a fan of the vinyl plank flooring kind of for the same reason. It can separate between the planks hot, cold, wet, dry. Um, people are going to come in and it's going to be wet so I want to be mindful of that. Um, tile, yeah, tile has to be specially done and I really don't know how to do that and for, uh, for a moving flexible place. So uh, sheet vinyl was going to be the way to go because it's going to be solid. There'll be no gaps for moisture to get through. It's relatively inexpensive. So one thing I wanted to figure out is where it's going to end. So I just kind of put a board here and drew a line in the floor of where I'm going to cut the old vinyl here. But I do want to remove the old laminate or the old linoleum. And it comes up very easily once you get started. Well, that corner's not coming up easy. But once you kind of get it started with something, it pulls up pretty easy and so the floor has to be cleaned. I did have to get some bolts out, which were really difficult today. That's, it took me about two hours to get these two old rusty bolts out. So I'm also gonna try and remove this, this strip right here. And so the first step is just to take my metal razor blade here. I'm gonna score this and do my best to get this whole section removed. The tools that I got, to spread the glue, I got one of the, I get this cheap uh, sheet flooring adhesive spreader. And here is the glue, stick and stay, got all this from Lowe's. Have a metal straight edge for cutting straight lines. Uh, I don't have an expensive linoleum roller, but uh, the girl at Lowe's recommended a good old rolling pin for getting the bubbles out. And tape measure, pin, and just constant, constant cleaning, 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 because I don't want to have anything. Uh, get under the underlayment, which will go down after I get this vinyl pulled up. A pair of flyers. I'm gonna hold the edge and then just pull. Kind of takes two hands. <laughs> so pulling a big piece up is pretty tough because this glue was really good. It's even pulling up some of the plywood. So I just kind of took my knife as I was pulling and made it more of a strip. And so I can cut it here and here and just kind of pull it off in bits and pieces. So here in the doorway, there's a great big trim piece and I got fortunate here, there was just three screws in it. And I took the three screws out. And this whole very heavy steel trim piece just lifted right out. So that's gonna make it great for fixing this edge here. Make it really simple. Go Now I do have this raised piece here. It's gonna be a bit tricky, but I think I'm just gonna put an aluminum uh, angle piece metal over on the edge of that so I won't put any vinyl along. So here I've got all the vinyl pulled out and really the underlayment in here is not terribly bad. It's not sticky. It all came up. Problem is when it came up it took up chunks of wood like this so it's hard to see but there are some big divots of wood so that would show up in the vinyl so I will have to put down some new underlayment. So here's my highly technical two scale drawing here. You can see all the cuts that have to be made. I don't have a table big enough for a four by eight sheet. So all I do is I have some paver stones and I just have them stacked by two. And then I just put a paper towel over it to protect the wood. And I'll just drop the sheet right on top of it. So I've laid my four by eight sheet down in the orientation that it will be going in. I know I want this factory edge over here because this is going to be the divider line between the the uh, vinyl flooring and the carpet. So I'm gonna start drawing out all the measurements and triple checking them. Here I've laid out all my lines best as I can tell. Now I'm gonna go back and start re-measuring and checking before I cut. All right, I've made all my little cuts here and I'm down to just my one last cut there. And <laughs> I'm gonna be really impressed that this thing fits. Well, unfortunately, it was a bit of a fail. I don't quite know where I went wrong. Um, this end needs to slide in more, but it can't. It's already fitting in there. There is, looks like I overshot it by about an inch and a half over here. I was, uh, I was off about a half inch in a couple places. So once I sorted that out, um, I, it, it's, it sits okay. I'm all right with it. 
So over here, it's pretty close. It looks really good. Back here in the back, which will be under cabinets, I didn't realize my air conditioner is on a bit of an angle. And over here, the gap is definitely bigger than I wanted, um, but it's pretty small. I think it's okay. I think it'll be just fine. I'm gonna go with it. I need to make another piece back here, which should be pretty straightforward. That goes on back around the corner here. And then I need to make a piece that goes in here to my little storage area so that I can put the door on it. It'll be all the right height. Now I've got all my underlayment put down. Now I, in the video, they used flathead nails to nail the floor down. Well, I don't want to do that. I don't want to use any nails. I'm just using screws. So I put a lot of screws in, I countersunk them, and then I put some caulk on top of it to give it a flat surface. I hope that works. Also where I seamed it together, I caulked it. And also where it had that really big gap. I went ahead and put a little caulk in there. I don't know it'll matter. And even up under here, that took quite a while to cut in this little tricky piece here. Now this sits on metal, so I can't screw it in, so I'm just going to wait till I put vinyl on it, and then I'll put sheet metal screws down the edge of that to get that to stay in. So here's the vinyl. It's got a really big pattern. Um, don't know if I'm fond of that, but what I did like is it's a perfect color match for those bolsters. I'm going to measure back six feet. So I'll have a six by foot six square, which is plenty extra big to start with. Now, this particular vinyl, <laughs> I didn't know when I bought it. This is padded vinyl and it's not made for gluing down. So I just, I couldn't find anything else I liked better. So I'm gonna go ahead and do what you shouldn't do, which is glue this down. So normally don't do this, but hey, this will be a great experiment to find out what happens when you glue down padded vinyl that you're not supposed to glue down. But I just can't stand it when your feet are wet and you're walking on a flooring and the, and the flooring lifts up when you walk. I hate that. So uh, normally this would just be tacked down with double-sided tape and moldings around the edges. But let's go a different way. So here I've kind of laid it out. And one problem I had is I don't have a wall to measure off on to make sure that my lines and my pattern are straight. So that's been a bit of a stressful thing. <laughs> Uh, so I initially put a slit down here to try to get around this thing and I've already made a couple little mistakes So I'm just going too fast. I just got to really slow down um, I made this cut here and I messed up and went too far And I'm gonna have a definite problem figuring out how to get over this raised part But basically one of the neat things I saw in the video was you put your finger right here in the corner and then you cut a V shape out like that and so then your corner will be in. Here I put my finger there and I pulled it back like this and then I cut a V pattern here like that and then I can push this right there into the corner and then we can see I've already made another mistake. <laughs> I'm not doing so well at this. Uh, I might be, I'll try to patch pieces in and use a big molding, but this is definitely a learning experience. I would say it's good to practice on a small project before you do this, but I'm just gonna, I, you know, I'm gonna cut it, and if it's a, it's a bust, I'm out $25, I'll go get another roll of something else. So if there's anything you take away from my videos is that, you know, it's okay to fail as long as you're trying new things. Now, I started off and I messed up this piece here. I messed up this piece here, I messed up this piece here, but as I'm going, I'm getting a bit better at it. Um, it's okay to have this gap here because of the trim, but you know, here, look at this. This isn't half bad, and I even made this crazy cut right here and did okay on that one, and here's how I did it. So here's where it falls off, and I just put my, my edge right here and held it as tight as I could against that, and then I just went along here and cut it and that's going to work. So try it. It's okay if it fails. Just try not to have too much money invested in it. <laughs> and so here I've made that cut. I've got a nice little bit to go over the edge that I can cut some more off. And then this, look at that. How's that for an edge? I guess I might figure this thing out by the time I get done. And there it is. So I'll show you the good parts and the bad parts. Did pretty good over here. 
Check this part out there. Nailed that pretty good. It didn't leave enough to get in the back. Eh, that's okay. Over here, not so bad. And then I've got this molding already set down on top of it. I'm gonna have to work out some sort of molding for this. Everything went well. All the way back in there. All the way here. Here. So the next step is to glue it up. And I think I'm gonna start with this piece here because it's kind of independent and practice on this one. Got it. I, I get the theory. I have this spreader and I'm supposed to use this side as a trowel to spread it out and it's sticky stuff. I don't know if you do half at a time, a section at a time, so just gonna kind of run with it and try it. So I guess I will just get a scoop of it. Don't know how much to get. Plop it on the floor huh. and starts. Oh, this ain't so bad. Huh. Alright, and just start spreading it out. And then when I get uh, about half done, then I'll lay it down. Got that on there. And this stuff does get on your hands. Uh, it does get on the wall. Oh, there, I just got a corner sticking it. So I have lots of paper towels handy. Push this down. Lots of paper towels. And then get my trusty rolling pin. And I'm going to start rolling it out. And get it down. I'm going to do that for a little bit. And then we'll flip back and do this other half. Alright, so here I've got it all spread out. And I've paid particular attention to get near the corners, which means it oozed over the corner, so when I push it over and start um, pushing it down, I'm going to make sure I keep cleaning it up with paper towels. My fingers are all sticky now, so I'm probably gonna this is probably gonna be a hit for the filming because my phone is getting sticky. So I have to say it was a very interesting learning experience. Um, you're gonna get sticky. You're gonna get messy. Um, if you had two people, it'd be a little easier. One person to do the glue and the other person to kind of press it down. On the rolling pin, I'm gonna have to give it a C because it was very difficult, well, it was really impossible to get into corners. This, you know, this is about as close as you can get. So what I would do is I'd get a I would get a fresh paper towel and I would just push it in. And I would also use, I used a lot of paper towels. Paper towels were my best friend because when my fingers would get too sticky and I needed to touch um, the vinyl, I would just grab a paper towel and grab it with that. And my hands were just white with sticky. It comes off, it's kind of like caulk. It, it, it peels off as it dries, so it wasn't that bad. Um, it will get on the walls. Um, it will get on the vinyl, get it off as soon as you can. If you can't wipe it off immediately and it's set a little bit, I found that uh, 409 does a great job of getting it up. And so I just kind of went around. Um, probably maybe look into doing some aluminum pieces there. And then next, we'll put the trim boards in. I'm gonna let this dry overnight. And tomorrow, I'm gonna to start working on the trim. And so the project is finished. I've got all the trim work done. Really pleased with how it turned out. Started over here. Got my cubby all taken care of. Got a nice trim piece across here. Good finish, could cut all the way to the trim board back here. Then I went ahead and went with the aluminum here, and that met up real well. Did wood trim where it was up against the walls. Did the metal trim where it's a step down for wear. Now this trim over here, nobody's ever gonna see. It's gonna be inside a cabinet, but I wanted to do it. So I wanted to practice where things all come together. Practice making these cuts even back on the back wall. I thought this cut, these cuts right here turned out really well. Now, I was gonna paint this gray, but I wanted to leave this as a tribute to the original uh, linoleum that was in here. So most people will never notice it. You really can't tell the difference. But I'm going to kind of leave it there as a tribute to the old. So thanks for watching this episode of the Vinyl Flooring. I hope you learned from my mistakes. And I hope you come out of this thing. And it's worthwhile to give it a try. 
you can always fix it later. All my sins were covered up. All my vinyl cutting sins were covered up by trim. The only one that you could kind of possibly maybe see is that little white line there. So trim will fix a lot of problems. So join me next time because next time it is carpet. I've got a really nice carpet picked out. So I'll see you in the next episode.